Clear your mind of questions. You must unlearn what you have learned. Hello, Star Wars fans. Adam the Star Wars Questioner here. Today we are going to be reviewing Star Wars Theories of Vader fan film, Episode 1, Shards of the Past. Unless you've been living under a rock and haven't been on YouTube over the past week, you have probably seen this video floating around. Now, I was always a little worried about this fan film and the possibility that it was ever going to be a reality. There are many reasons why, but they all revolve around Star Wars Theory himself. I won't go into my reasons why, but let's just say that I am highly surprised he actually delivered an actual product. Personally, I feel that he was throwing money around without being smart. Like, why was he paying extras, which you could see them filling out payment deposit forms during a live stream from on set, when he could just contact the Southern California Garrison, the 501st? It has 500 members and most likely would have been willing to be part of the film for free. Anywho, the film has been released, and what do I think of it? I have watched it five times. The first time just to experience it, the second time to see if I could pick up any details I'd missed, and the last three times to be analytical with a critical eye for reviewing purposes. Star Wars Theory stated that he, when he first pitched it, that he wanted this to be a Hollywood quality film, so I will be reviewing it on that stated intent. The good. The movie may be 16 minutes long, but the actual movie only has about 12 minutes and 50 seconds once you remove the opening solo style intro and the credits. The story is rather good for how short it is. It's one of the few fan films that has ever dealt with Vader's emotions, especially at the Lost Academy. Night's Quest did give us a small glimpse of it, but nothing as in-depth as this film did. It also ends in such a way that if Episode 2 is ever created, the hype is for real. It also has some incredible shots, such as Vader waking up in his chamber. Most of the good stuff, I feel, comes from Danny Ramirez, the director, and Nicolaj Welch Olsen, the other writer. Star Wars Theory admitted during the Q&A livestream afterwards that most of the dialogue, especially between Palpatine and Vader, was exclusively due to the other two writers. The action is phenomenal. It has a Rogue One style action sequence that will certainly please any fan. It simply has a truly epic feel to it, and there is very little in Star Wars that compares to the force-off between Vader and the Emperor. This has excellent music. Personally, I think that Cadmus A. Wilcox wasn't the best of the choices that Star Wars Theory had, personally thinking that TCG music had a, was a much better choice, but Wilcox dispelled my fears for his ability to make good Star Wars music. It was emotionally charged and getting all the stuff I want to see in a Vader-centric fan film with liberal usage of the Imperial March. For the most part, I loved the actors and actresses that they chose for the roles. Catherine LaSalle, who played Padme, really resembled Padme. Merrick Knight, who plays young Anakin, doesn't really look like him, but he managed to hold his own in his scenes. And just all the actors all around were really great. Now on to the bad. I know most people go, this is so great, but the CGI fits more with video games than actual movies. Battle damage to trooper armor wasn't that well done. Scenes taking place completely in space aren't good, and when we, when we arrive on Naboo and come across a gap in the floor, it looks almost like it was painted on, with almost little realistic feel to it. It's sad when Ryan vs. Dorkman produced more realistic battle damage with like 1% of the budget than this fan film did with the massive resources that Star Wars Theory put into it. A quick comparison of movie and game graphics will show that it is nowhere near the Hollywood quality that Star Wars Theory was always crowing about. Vader's armor is phenomenal, but this armor is owned by the Vader actor, who professionally cosplays as Lord Vader. The Royal Guards are also great, as is the Imperial Officers. Those aren't what's bad. I honestly feel that the clone trooper armor, though, at times has an almost foamy look to it, or a very plasticky feel to it. This is definitely noticeable when Lord Vader arrives on Naboo and is talking with Commander Fox. Now on to the uglies. During the fight sequence, you could definitely tell that the extras were being extremely ginger with how they felt. Comes to find out that they were afraid of damaging their armor. So much so that the actors refused to be more realistic with their falls and actually brought down the entire fight by not allowing Star Wars Theory to do everything he wanted to do, 
such as Vader using the Force to throw them around against walls. There is some extremely bad continuity issues with this movie. During the dream sequence, bodies magically disappear before the fight is even over. One clone that was propped up against a wall when Vader was kneeling after being attacked suddenly changes from a white clone trooper to Commander Fox. Vader breaks Palpatine's right leg and left arm, and yet Palpatine still manages to use the arm just fine. Even though this is a dream sequence, if you watch the entire dream, it's actually very consistent throughout the film going so far as for you to actually hear Palpatine use the force to fix his legs. He doesn't do that though. He doesn't use the force to fix his arm, so I'm going to call it shenanigans. Palpatine's face is one of the worst I've ever seen for a Palpatine. Most of our fan films don't do good Palpatine faces, and this is no exception, which is sad because the actor they chose for Palpatine is spot on for Ian McDermott. Overall, I would have to give this film a 7 out of 10. I feel that Star Wars Theory oversold what he was trying to do to us. I feel that he wasted money where he didn't need to, such as 6000 in concept art, buying out theater, and paying for extras when he didn't need to. He probably wasted 10000 that he could have put into giving us a longer movie, allowing for more fleshing out, and perhaps giving us our first look at Mace Windu. Another reason why this can't be higher than a 7 is because of the fact that we know that he shot an additional scene, but he won't release it. He's basically holding it hostage until we get closer to episode 2. Now lastly, I don't know if there's going to be an episode 2. He certainly is enthusiastic about it, and he certainly putting out more content so that way he can fund it but let's face the facts he's going to be putting 250,000 into the next episode and even he has admitted that he might not be able to and this is much larger than his original estimate 200,000 and it's all out of his pocket also let's face it Star Wars fan films are very bad when it comes to releasing additional installments just off the top of my head Dark Allegiances, Threads of Destiny, and Dark Resurrection. All these movies never produce their sequels, but if he does make an episode 2, I will be all for it. The story is very interesting, and the movie is indeed a very fun time, and has some of the best stuff we've ever seen on screen for Star Wars. Well, that's it for today, guys. Now it's here to tell me what you think of it. Leave your comments down below, have a wonderful day, and may the Force be with you. The rebellion cannot be allowed to persist. Ignite the inferno.